so maybe we can start with your name and a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Sean Malar. Uh, a little bit about myself. I live in the downtown Messiah. And I've lived here since 98. And uh, before 1998, I was a, a, I guess you'd call a vagabond. And then I came to the downtown east side and I became a member of the community. Um, and uh, became active in the community's interests. Cool. And you were involved with the Woodward Squad as well? Yeah. 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 Why did you decide to get involved with that? I was um, <clears throat> actually working the CCAP program um, back then with Tom and VLA. And we caught wind uh, that um, uh, Gordon Campbell was uh, trying to sell the building, trying to sell the site, quietly, <laughs> and, uh, without any input from the community, uh, behind our backs, basically. And so, you know, we've been doing all kinds of demos for years, uh, until that point. And uh, uh, so it was just time to do an uh, occupation, to occupy the building. So that's how it came about. You oh. know, he was trying to sell it, and it was like uh, urgent. It felt urgent, right? Because he was doing it secretly. You know, before there'd been these deals with Fama and you know the black box and stuff. And, we knew about it, so you know, we um, did demos and that. But for this one, we did the occupation. And um, a little bit of history into the Woodward's like building. Why it came about that he was selling it? What was around it? Like, what was it exactly? Well, um, the thing about this this site uh, is just so huge. And, um, you know, it, it's in, in our neighborhood um, um, because, excuse me, of all the gentrification that happened around the world, you know, we've seen it happen, it went around the world, we've seen it coming. So we, we had time to prepare a bit, you know. Um, so, um, were keenly aware of how important this huge site was to the future of, of uh, the people living down here after the gentrification came through. Um, and what kind of actions had you done before the occupation itself? Oh, oh. <laughs> and why was it important to why was it important to hold this space particularly? Um, well. Um, uh, the, uh, the perception was that, uh, well, there was even a slogan. The slogan was, as Woodward's goes, so goes the neighborhood. Something like that, right? Because um, it's just so big, it's such a big site. And uh, uh, there might have been some kind of um, uh, feelings that, that the, the old, the, the heritage here was significant to the low-income community too, or the working class community that, that for the heritage purpose of the history of uh, uh, the, the Woodward store um, serving primarily the working class people, uh, might have been something to um, a symbol, you know, for, uh, for the working class people. Hopefully. You know, some place for them to come shop, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just because it was so big, you know, and uh, we could see that the gentrification was coming, was coming, and so obviously the idea is to secure as much real estate as possible and as, uh, 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 you know, as much public space as possible for the with low-income people, because low-income people deserve to have community as much as anyone else, and that's something that we've had to fight. Right? 
there's this whole idea of, of well, uh, you know, why have we built this ghetto? We have to disperse these people, and um, you know, it's like, well, how come you gotta call a community of low-income people a ghetto? I mean, um, it, it is a ghetto, but it was also a community too, right? Um, so you were the first person to get into the Woodward's building to start the squat. What was that like? <clears throat> well, I was nervous because I knew there was dogs and the security guard. Um, um, I, I was also nervous trying to break down the wind like it was boarded up, eh? so I had a crowbar and um, was uh, prying open and prying open plywood off the window and uh, my perch was somewhat precarious so that was a little nervous but then it came off and uh, there was two other fellows with me and a dog we had a dog with us too and uh, I guess the guard heard us coming in because uh, he was downstairs and he just stayed downstairs which was nice uh, and it was dusty and with a lot of uh, Pigeon, uh, pigeon poop around, which isn't good for breathing, right? And it was dark and dingy. Um, and so when the three of us were there, uh, we were, uh, it was a little urgent because there was a demonstration coming down the street. That we knew there was going to be a demonstration coming, so we had a bunch of banners and stuff that we had to get set up in time. Uh, for the demonstration to see and then so um, so we got in and it was work I sweated my ass off running up and down the stairs you know trying to figure out the place and get our bearings inside and hang up all these banners and, and then the demonstration came down so we put down a ladder and uh, um, uh, you know the uh, <coughs> It was kind of fun. It was my moment of glory. The, the demonstration came, and, and we were up on the portico, right? And uh, so I had the megaphone and gave a little speech, right? And it was kind of funny. But, uh, and I say, put down the ladder and say, okay, we're going to open up our new social housing. And uh, I thought, you know, that it would last for a day or two at the most, right? And, uh, so that's all I was really prepared for, right? I, you know, <clears throat> so I stayed over one night. <clears throat> and the thing when we put on the ladder, a lot of people came in. And so uh, it was really cool. Uh, um, I mean, the place was huge, so it was fun exploring, you know. And uh, uh, Ivan Drury went up to the... the Blazed the path to the top of the W, so so we had all of our ladders and everything already set up so we could go up to the W, which was quite a thrill. It was quite a thrill. Um, and then um, as we actually went up the W and hung some banners from there. Um, so Campbell's went to chain, and, uh, which was fun. And um, The next day we went up, because the banners were getting all twisted in the wind, right? So we had to go up and weigh down the banners so they would, you know, stay unfurled. And so I took this fellow up with me, and uh, he get up there, and he's looking, you know, the the, um, the W has the branches, right? The, it's going up, right? And on the side, this big hole in it. And there was an eagle's nest inside the W. And uh, so he's going, holy shit, look, there's an eagle's nest. And just when he's doing that, there was a picture in the sun. The next day, was, uh, was there was a big picture of the banners and then a little picture of him pointing. And that was just when he discovered the eagle's nest, which is kind of cool. Um, and so, uh, and the eagle's nest thing is funny. A funny end to that story. Um, if I may ask, in terms of how it ended, like what was the reason for the end? Like, 
what were the promises made and so on? Well, like I say, I was only expecting to be there for a day or two. Um, I was quite surprised when it turned into a squad, like a, a real squad. And then when the people got moved, moved out um, and onto the street, um, that was God desperate, you know? That was hard. Those people, so I didn't squat. I just uh, broke open the window and set it out, kind of, you know? And invited people in, that's what I did. And uh, then the real, because I had a place to live. So then some real squatters came. <laughs> and I was just a poser. So I went home. I just hung around the first day and slept overnight. And then the next day I was like, whoa, who's this? Who's this guy right over? Because I knew the history and everything. And I knew that we had blueprints and all this stuff for, you know, that we've been working on trying to get social housing in there for a long time. And, and then when all the squatters, like the real squatters came in, they started doing like their demands, right? We want an architect down here now. <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, we already got drawings and everything. So I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> so I was actually not invited to leave. <laughs> um, so like when it did come to an end? Um, it was... Um, uh, at the civic collection at the time. Uh, so it, it was an election issue. Uh, thank God. <laughs> People still be. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the civic government um, had, a, had a reason to to get urgently get people some, in, in somewhere, right? And, uh, so they opened the Dominion Hotel and moved the squatters in there and then over to the Stanley. So they found them a place, a temporary place. Um, and um, so that's when it ended. So, and also the thing was there was all this stuff about social housing in the new Woodward's building. And as we're sitting here, we're sitting in the Woodward's building, doing the interview. Um, what do you think of the new Woodward's building? I love the look. It looks great. Um, oh, no, no, no. I think people, people were, were dreaming, right? And uh, visualizing, kind of imagining a, a, a place for low-income people, which this isn't. Uh, I mean, this this here place in here, the public area of Woodward's is London Drugs and Masters. And uh, uh, Masters is hostile to low-income people. And, uh, well, I think London Drugs probably had a lot of bad experience with low-income people. But they're, because, because like, I'm talking about the security. And how you're treated by security when you when you when you walk into do your shopping, if you're treated like a thief, or you're treated like a customer, so you masters you're going to be treated like a thief. And um, so I've stopped shopping there. I know a lot of people have stopped shopping there. So I've been just going to London Drugs, and I've been thinking, wow, they're doing good, right? I haven't had it until yesterday. I was in there, and uh, someone got a little excited for no reason. And it's just really insulting, you know. <laughs> you're trying to do your shopping, and you get some, uh, you know, one or two or three staff people all pumped full of adrenaline and bug-eyed following you around because they think you're catching somebody's feelings. Um, that's really uh, insensitive, you know. Especially Nestor, they got the sign right out there, right? Where are the community shops? Well, no, it's not where the community shops. The community's not welcome there because <laughs> the community's rejudged. Um, What's your uh, personal experience been with Nestor's? 
Well, my personal experience with Masters has been the day when it opened. I, you know, I'm curious to see uh, um, the new place and everything. And, and I walked in there. And I was like Pied Piper with, I guess because it was their just opener, they had a couple of detectives there. And I was like the Pied Piper the first day there, you know, was like, <laughs> with the staff and they're all following me around. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, you know, like I said, I've been shopping there. I was shopping there regularly, once a week, going in there. And, uh, um, you know, they, they were following me and checking me out, and, and then eventually it got to the point where this one fellow who wasn't even, made no pretense of uh, trying to be discreet or anything. He stood beside me the whole time, stuck to me like glue and washed my hands. And uh, while that's going on, you get, you know, other staff people coming, and what they do is they come up and they got the, uh, the adrenaline thing, right? Can I help you? You know, it's like, okay, well, geez, you know. Um, <laughs> so in that, and so I, I, uh, I stopped shopping there. It was too disgusting, too disgusting. And, you know, it's just the way it's done, right? Like, I can understand, like, I go to TNTs, and they're concerned about shoplifters too, right? But no, I, they don't do it the same way. You know, like they get the security follow me, follow me around or whatever, but not the same way. You know, not like they just, not, not like they're fishing, like they're just, not with all that excitement and everything, you know? That's what makes it really, it's like I'm John Dillinger or something. Anyways. And like I said, I got no record. Yeah, I got no record. I'm not a thief. Yeah, I couldn't steal. You know?